Hello and welcome back. Uh, my name is Mark Dennis and this is my studio where I do most of my photography. Uh, today I am going to be setting up a still life photograph. Um, I've been down to the supermarket and I have bought some lovely cherries and some lovely plums. And I am going to set up this still life because I've got some teaching to do uh, next week for a couple of students who are coming down and I really need a lesson plan for them. So I thought I'd do a quick run through to make sure I know what I'm doing. And I thought it might be of interest to you guys and girls out there to go and see a simple still life setup. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, please stick around and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, well, one of the most important aspects of any sort of still life are the backgrounds that you put the still life on or against or whatever. Um, there are various choices you have when it comes to backgrounds. You can make your own, um, you can buy a, a surface like I bought this particular piece of wood here, sand it down yourself and then wax it all or whatever. You can also go and buy these lovely vinyl um, backdrops and uh, this particular backdrop came from a company called photographybackdrop.club. Um, I highly recommend these, these are great and they're very, very affordable. As you can see I've got two here, I've got them contrasting one dark one light this is the wood effect one white wood effect I think that one's called scratch metal um, really really nice I'm hoping this will work this combination for this particular shot as I have dark cherries against the sort of lighter background here and I have the nice rich oranges and reds against this scratch metal background the darker background for the plums and I think that might be a good combination but what's really good about these is that you can swap them out if I get it wrong. It's very easy for me just to go back into my cupboard and pull out another one and just clip it on and then you can experiment and try. But of course, you don't have to use these sort of bought backgrounds. You can just use like a wall, like the back here, or indeed if you're shooting outside uh, with available light or whatever with flash, you can just then use a very shallow depth of field and blur out your background. You have so many choices, but background is really important. Right, well, um, I'm now going to go and sort out some cherries. Uh, these ones look a little bit worse for wear, actually, to be honest. I don't think they're the best buy I've ever done. Uh, so I'm going to go and just give them a quick polish before putting them in the bowl, and hopefully that will brighten them all up a little bit. So for this particular shot, I'm going to have to be at the end of the table looking all the way down, so I'm going to need quite a long lens. So I have put on the 70 200 f2.8. Um, that's a cracking lens, really, really sharp, has a nice wide aperture, 2.8, really good for depth or shallow depth of field. Um, so now let's go and have a quick look and see roughly what we're going to get with this lens. Well, we have made a start. We have the cherries looking great in that bowl. Lovely specular highlight clipping the top there, all look nice and shiny. Um, I think we need to add some more cherries, maybe in front of the bowl, maybe to the side as well. And then we are going to add some of these lovely plums um, near the background to give the background some sort of color as well. And hopefully they'll look great against that sort of scratch metal sort of effect background. Okay, so uh, here we go. Right, so yeah, nearly there. Um, I've got a little bit more fine tuning to do. Uh, I will need to turn this light off, which is the one you can't see because that's the one that's actually uh, illuminating me at the moment. Because um, we're going to just do a one light setup for this thing. So we'll keep this guy where he is, and uh, this is giving us these lovely specular highlights on top here. And instead of having this great big powerful light up here, we're just going to put in a small little reflector like uh, this one. <laughs> And we're just going to drop this down to the side here. Um, this actually has a silver and a gold side. We're going to probably use the silver side here, but it's just going to give us a little bit of fill along this side and a little bit of fill and soften out some of the shadows. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at that. Okay, well, I think that's about it. I'm really happy with this final image. I think um, the plums look great against that darker background and the cherries look really good as well. Um, yeah, it's a very simple shot, but quite effective. Um, and I'm pretty certain that the two students coming down next week will be able to go and sort of pull this off in an hour. Um, so hopefully they will learn a little bit about composition, a bit about color, and a little bit about lighting. And if you do want to try this at home and you haven't got all this sort of gizmos and these lights and other bits and pieces, it, just use a window, just get your setup near a window. And if the light's too bright coming through that window, just cover it with greaseproof paper or something like that. 
Um, and just a, a, another piece of uh, reflector or white card or something, just to do a little bit of fill, is very easy to do. It doesn't have to be a big expensive set for a shot like this. Um, so if you get a chance, give it a go. Right, well I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been fun to make. Um, I love doing stuff like this and as I say, there are gonna be more of these sort of videos coming up in the future. So please feel free to subscribe if you want to and I will see you in the next one.